All right. I just got asked by a student in Think It, Build It, my bubble course, link below, how we can do this feature where I select one or many users in a multi-select like this, basically you're selecting items from a list and the list below this list of tasks will return any tasks that have been assigned to any of these users, right? So this is essentially this list is doing a search for any tasks that have been assigned to either Jason or to Peter. Now, kind of one of the first things that as a beginner, you might do when you come to do this search is under your search for tasks here, you'll add a new constraint where you'll say, look, does the assignees and you realize that you can't compare this list. You can't use this operator here on a list because this assignees is a list that can contain a single item. Okay. And what we're importing to this repeating group here is a list. This multi drop down outputs a list. So we can't do that. And so what we end up doing is we end up using an advanced filter. So we go filters, we add a new constraint, come down to advanced, and then we just say, okay, does this tasks assignees contains list multi drop down assignees filters value this this drop multi drop down is the assignees filters okay so that is taking one list the list of assignees on the task and just by the way here's my data structure task assignees which is a list of users so we are taking one list of users and we're seeing is the second list of users the one outputted by this multi drop down is that second list contained by the first list in other words does the first list contain every single item in the second list okay and if i i don't believe that will work em ignore empty constraints but we can try it anyway what we'll do here is i will say okay all the tasks for Jason, all the tasks for Jason and Sarah, cool. All the tasks with Peter are uh, no. Okay. This is not giving us the option that we want. We want the tasks that are assigned to Jason or Sarah or Peter. Okay. Which as we've seen, right, there's several tasks that are assigned to Jason or Sarah or Peter. Okay. By doing this contains list operator, we are running the expression where we're asking every task, does your list of assigned users contain Jason and Sarah? But what we're after is does your list of assigned users contain Jason or Sarah? Okay. So we have to do something slightly different here. So to do the or operation, we have to approach this slightly differently where I'm just going to come back here. So we're at this task assignees. Okay. That is a perfectly reasonable way to start this. Instead of contains list, we're looking for an operator called intersect with, intersect with. And what this will do, if you, which you should be in the habit of doing this is when you hover over one of these, you can go see reference and you can read in, from bubbles documentation, how this works. But I'll just quickly tell you this intersect with operator here, it takes one list compares it with a second list and returns all of the items that are in both lists, right? So if list one has A, B, and C, and list two has B and C, then what will be returned here by this intersect expression is B and C, those items B and C that are in both of these lists. And why this is useful is because what we have here is a multi drop down. So that's a list of users. And we also have a list of users that we're grabbing from a task. So this tasks assignees, because how this advanced expression is working is it's a basically a formula, a question that's going to be asked to each task in this list, right? We're starting with a list of tasks and we're asking each of them a question. Okay. And that question is. Does your list of users, your assignees, okay, are any of the users in your assignees list 
in this other list, this list that we're creating via this multi drop down here. Okay. So, so how we format that expression is intersect with right multi drop down assignees filters value. Okay. So this is essentially taking two lists of users, one from the assignees field, one from the multi drop down, comparing them. Okay. And then it's returning a new list of users at this point. We're dealing with a list of users. Okay. Specifically those users that are in both of those lists, the list of assignees on the task and the list of users in this multi dropdown. Okay. So there's now a new list being returned. And because we are formatting this advanced filter as a question, we now need to formulate it in a way that it returns either yes or no. Okay, so right now we're dealing with a list of users. Okay, and the way that we can formulate this as a yes or a no from a task's point of view, right? The task is asking this question is, is this new list, this intersected list, right? Does it contain any users at all? Okay, because if it doesn't contain any users, right? If the task assignees are Jason and Sarah, the multi drop downs list of assignees is Peter. Okay, then this intersect with isn't going to return any users. There's just going to be zero users returned. Okay. And that means that for this task, we don't want it to be populated in our repeating group. We don't want to see it. Okay. It should be filtered out by our, by our multi drop down, you know, logic. However, if it was Sarah and Peter that were assigned to a task and Peter was in this multi drop down. Well, then the overlap there, once we do intersect, is going to be one because one user, namely Peter, is in both of those lists. And so this expression would evaluate to yes, to true. And that means that this task could now be populated in the repeating group. So to formulate this as a question, okay, we essentially have to say, is this list empty or not? Okay, which when working with lists, you would use this count expression to do that. So essentially is the count zero, right? Is it, is it empty? Well, we'd formulate it kind of the inverse. So if it's not zero, right, this is now going to evaluate to yes. And for every task where this advanced filter here evaluates to yes, it's going to be returned by this filtered expression. Okay. By this filtered operator here. And so what that amounts to is at the moment, this isn't going to work. Even if I have I ignore empty constraints. Okay. We're not seeing any users here. And that's just because this, this filtered, these advanced filters can't, they can't pick up this ignore empty constraints in the same way that normal search constraints do. We're going to find a workaround for that, but just to show you the basic functionality here. Here are all the tasks that have Jason in their assignees. If I add Sarah here, should be the same thing, except now we're getting another task that has Sarah in it that doesn't have Jason in it, right? It has Peter in it. And if I choose something even more left field, let's just go Peter. Now I'm getting tasks that have either Jason or Peter in their assignees. Okay. So this is essentially an or operator in this question, like return all the tasks where the assignees contain Jason or Peter, right? Or Sarah, for example. Okay. The list can go on and on. Now, the quick side note about this is because we are using an advanced filter here, this is quite performance, uh, heavy. The work to filter this list is being done by the client, which in web speak means the user's device. Right. Most often a computer, a laptop, but obviously sometimes a phone as well. And long story short, computing power of your device, much less than the computing power of the server, which is normally going to do these searches for you. And so if you're asking your phone or your laptop to do this filtered expression on a huge list, okay, it might take some time to do so. So when doing this. You need to keep that in mind. You need to, you know, either use this on small lists like we're doing here and it's instantaneous from the user's point of view. Okay. Or adapt your user experience so that 
you know, a user might be clicking a button to trigger this filter. And then you might show like a loading indicator, you know, searches loading, that kind of thing. Hide the fact that your users are waiting behind some kind of, some kind of visual indicator. And the use, your users will be a lot more forgiving than if they're just sitting here staring at a screen where nothing's actually happening. Or, you know, you can try use some third party backend like Zeno or something like that, which I don't have a lot of experience with, so I can't speak to that specifically, but I'm sure that they are a bit more performant than bubble is at this time with doing these kind of advanced filtering server side, so to speak, rather than client side, like we're doing here. Now to work around this problem where when the page is loaded, we're not seeing any results where we actually only want this multi drop down to kick in once the user's actually selected here. So normally, as you probably know, we would use this ignore empty constraints. That's not going to work here. And so we have to be a little bit more creative. We essentially want to say, look, if this multi drop down here doesn't have any values in it, then just show me kind of the original search, the search for all tasks. But as soon as there is some value in this multi drop down, then switch over to this expression here. Okay. So what we could do is we could, if I just go and copy this, I could add a condition where I say, okay, when the multi drop down assignees filters value count is greater than zero. Okay. It's the same thing as saying when there's at least one user selected here in that case, then switch the data source for this repeating group to be a search for tasks where we're adding that filter. Otherwise by default, we just, we just do a normal search for tasks. And in that way, here's sort of our default list. But as soon as we add something here, then we switch over to the multi drop down. Now on more complex searches, this is kind of a, not a very clean setup because you might have some more search constraints here pointing to other inputs and you would have to add those search constraints both in the default data source and over in your, in your alternative data source here where that multi drop down is being triggered and a new constraint here as well. So we're repeating ourselves there. Generally speaking, we don't want to repeat ourselves. And so what I would do is I would have on the page a pop-up. This is, if you've been following any of my stuff, this is a trick I've been pick, picked up from working at AirDev. Very, just a super powerful approach here where we have a pop-up that you never show to your users where you can use, add some hidden variables. And I'm just going to do this really crudely right, right now. So you just add a group that adds as a, acts as a container, acts as a variable. So we might call this our variable tasks list which is going to be, this is where now we're going to add that kind of initial search. So initial search tasks where you would add any other search constraints that you want, you know, pointing the due date to a, a date and time input, a date and time filter, anything like that. Okay. So we're doing a search for tasks. Sorry, I've added, the, added this as a group and it should be a repeating group. So variable tasks, which is a list of tasks. So I will just copy that expression, remove that group. And we don't, you don't need to get kind of fancy here at all. Just do a search for tasks. And yeah, like I said, this is where you would add any other search constraints that you have. So now we have a list of tasks living in that repeating group, which we can then point to our kind of visual repeating group where we're rendering these tasks. So instead of now doing a new search for tasks here, we just point this at the list of tasks living inside of that variable tasks that we just created in that hidden pop-up and the same thing over here, right? Instead of a search for tasks here, I might just have to copy this expression so we don't lose it and to go data source, variable tasks, lists of tasks. And then you just re-add your advanced filter here. So add a new constraint, advanced and then paste in that, that advanced expression again. And the beauty of doing it this way is that of course, if you want to make changes to that original search, then you just do it here, right? You just add new search constraints here 
and it's going to replicate no matter whether your users are using this, the, the default view or regardless of whatever filters they might be applying to the repeating group here. Okay. So that's a really quick overview. This is just like a really crude, quick video that I've just recorded just so that my students have something, but I will be recording kind of a, a let's say a slower paced or a little bit more well-rounded version of this tutorial for my course, Think It, Build It. So if you're interested in that course, please jump in there. Would love to have you. Otherwise, happy bubbling.